the history of the camera can be traced much further back than the introduction of photography. Cameras evolved from the camera obscura, and continued to change through many generations of photographic technology, including daguerreotypes, calotypes, dry plates, film, and digital cameras. The Camera Obscura Photographic cameras were a development of the Camera Obscura, a device dating back to the ancient Chinese and ancient Greeks, which uses a pinhole or lens to project an image of the scene outside upside down onto a viewing surface. On January 24, 1544 mathematician and instrument maker Reynas Gemma Frisius of Leuven University used one to watch a solar eclipse, publishing a diagram of his method in De Radio Astronomica a Geometrico in the following year. In 1558 Giovanni Battista della Porta was the first to recommend the method as an aid to drawing. Before the invention of photographic processes there was no way to preserve the images produced by these cameras apart from manually tracing them. The earliest cameras were room-sized, with space for one or more people inside. These gradually evolved into more and more compact models such as that by near copyright PCE's time portable handheld cameras suitable for photography were readily available. The first camera that was small and portable enough to be practical for photography was envisioned by Johann Zahn in 1685, though it would be almost 150 years before such an application was possible. Early fixed images, the first partially successful photograph of a camera image was made in approximately 1816 by Nika Copyright 4 Nia Copyright PCE, using a very small camera of his own making and a piece of paper coated with silver chloride which darkened where it was exposed to light. No means of removing the remaining unaffected silver chloride was known to near copyright PCE, so the photograph was not permanent, eventually becoming entirely darkened by the overall exposure to light necessary for viewing it. In the mid-1820s, near copyright PCE used a sliding wooden box camera made by Parisian opticians Charles and Vincent Chevalier to experiment with photography on surfaces thinly coated with bitumen of Judea. The bitumen slowly hardened in the brightest areas of the image. The unhardened bitumen was then dissolved away. One of those photographs has survived. Daguerreotypes and calotypes, after near copyright PCE's death in 1833, his partner Louis Daguerre continued to experiment and by 1837 had created the first practical photographic process, which he named the daguerreotype and publicly unveiled in 1839. Daguerre treated a silver-plated sheet of copper with iodine vapor to give it a coating of light-sensitive silver iodide. After exposure in the camera, the image was developed by mercury vapor and fixed with a strong solution of ordinary salt. Henry Fox Talbot perfected a different process, the calotype, in 1840. Both used cameras that were little different from Zahn's model, with a sensitized plate or sheet of paper placed in front of the viewing screen to record the image. Focusing was generally via sliding boxes. Dry plates, collodion dry plates had been available since 1855, thanks to the work of Da Copyright Sierra Copyright Van Monkhoven, but it was not until the invention of the gelatin dry plate in 1871 by Richard Leach Maddox that they rivaled wet plates in speed and quality. Also, for the first time, cameras could be made small enough to be handheld, or even concealed. There was a proliferation of various designs, from single and twin lens reflexes to large and bulky field cameras, handheld cameras, and even detective cameras disguised as pocket watches, hats, or other objects. The shortened exposure times that made candid photography possible also necessitated another innovation, the mechanical shutter. The very first shutters were separate accessories, though built-in shutters were common by around the start of the 20th century. Kodak and the birth of film. The use of photographic film was pioneered by George Eastman, who started manufacturing paper film in 1885 before switching to celluloid in 1889. His first camera, which he called the Kodak, was first offered for sale in 1888. It was a very simple box camera with a fixed focus lens and single shutter speed, which along with its relatively low price appealed to the average consumer. The Kodak came preloaded with enough film for 100 exposures and needed to be sent back to the factory for processing and reloading when the roll was finished. 
By the end of the 19th century Eastman had expanded his lineup to several models including both box and folding cameras. In 1900, Eastman took mass-market photography one step further with the Brownie, a simple and very inexpensive box camera that introduced the concept of the snapshot. The Brownie was extremely popular and various models remained on sale until the 1960s. Film also allowed the movie camera to develop from an expensive toy to a practical commercial tool. Despite the advances in low-cost photography made possible by Eastman, plate cameras still offered higher quality prints and remained popular well into the 20th century. To compete with roll film cameras, which offered a larger number of exposures per loading, many inexpensive plate cameras from this era were equipped with magazines to hold several plates at once. Special backs for plate cameras allowing them to use film packs or roll film were also available, as were backs that enabled roll film cameras to use plates. Except for a few special types such as Schmidt cameras, most professional astrographs continued to use plates until the end of the 20th century when electronic photography replaced them. 35 mm Oscar Barnack, who was in charge of research and development at Leitz, decided to investigate using 35mm scene film for still cameras while attempting to build a compact camera capable of making high-quality enlargements. He built his prototype 35mm camera around 1913, though further development was delayed for several years by World War I. Late's test marketed the design between 1923 and 1924, receiving enough positive feedback that the camera was put into production as the Leica in 1925. The Leica's immediate popularity spawned a number of competitors, most notably the Contax, and cemented the position of 35mm as the format of choice for high-end compact cameras. Kodak got into the market with the Retina in 1934, which introduced the 135 cartridge used in all modern 35mm cameras. Although the Retina was comparatively inexpensive, 35mm cameras were still out of reach for most people and roll film remained the format of choice for mass market cameras. This changed in 1936 with the introduction of the inexpensive Argus A and to an even greater extent in 1939 with the arrival of the immensely popular Argus C3. Although the cheapest cameras still used roll film, 35mm film had come to dominate the market by the time the C3 was discontinued in 1966. The fledgling Japanese camera industry began to take off in 1936 with the Canon 35mm rangefinder, an improved version of the 1933 Canon prototype. Japanese cameras would begin to become popular in the West after Korean War veterans and soldiers stationed in Japan brought them back to the United States and elsewhere. TLRs and SLRs The first practical reflex camera was the Franken Heideck Roll Reflex Medium Format TLR of 1928. Though both single and twin lens reflex cameras had been available for decades, they were too bulky to achieve much popularity. The Roll Reflex, however, was sufficiently compact to achieve widespread popularity and the medium format TLR design became popular for both high and low end cameras. A similar revolution in SLR design began in 1933 with the introduction of the Elege Exacta, a compact SLR which used 127 roll film. This was followed three years later by the first Western SLR to use 35mm film, the Kynik Shakta. The 35mm SLR design gained immediate popularity and there was an explosion of new models and innovative features after World War II. There were also a few 35mm TLRs, the best known of which was the Contar Flex of 1935, but for the most part these met with little success. The first major post-war SLR innovation was the eye-level viewfinder, which first appeared on the Hungarian Duflex in 1947 and was refined in 1948 with the Contax S, the first camera to use a pentaprism. Prior to this, all SLRs were equipped with waist-level focusing screens. The Duflex was also the first SLR with an instant return mirror, which prevented the viewfinder from being blacked out after each exposure. This same time period also saw the introduction of the Hasselblad 1600F, which set the standard for medium format SLRs for decades. In 1952 the Asahi Optical Company introduced the first Japanese SLR using 35mm film, the Asahi Flex. 
Several other Japanese camera makers also entered the SLR markets in the 1950s, including Canon, Yashica, and Nikon. Nikon Sentry, the Nikon F, had a full line of interchangeable components and accessories and is generally regarded as the first Japanese system camera. It was the F, along with the earlier S series of rangefinder cameras, that helped establish Nikon's reputation as a maker of professional quality equipment. Instant cameras. While conventional cameras were becoming more refined and sophisticated, an entirely new type of camera appeared on the markets in 1948. This was the Polaroid Model 95, the world's first viable instant picture camera. Known as a land camera after its inventor, Edwin Land, the Model 95 used a patented chemical process to produce finished positive prints from the exposed negatives in under a minute. The land camera caught on despite its relatively high price and the Polaroid lineup had expanded to dozens of models by the 1960s. The first Polaroid camera aimed at the popular market, the Model 20 Swinger of 1965, was a huge success and remains one of the top-selling cameras of all time. Automation The first camera to feature automatic exposure was the selenium light meter equipped, fully automatic Super Kodak 620 pack of 1938, but its extremely high price of $225 kept it from achieving any degree of success. By the 1960s, However, low-cost electronic components were commonplace and cameras equipped with light meters and automatic exposure systems became increasingly widespread. The next technological advance came in 1960, when the German Mech 16 SB subminiature became the first camera to place the light meter behind the lens for more accurate metering. However, through the lens metering ultimately became a feature more commonly found on SLRs than other types of camera. The first SLR equipped with a TTL system was the Topsonor E-Super of 1962. Digital Cameras Digital cameras differ from their analog predecessors primarily in that they do not use film, but capture and save photographs on digital memory cards or internal storage instead. Their low operating costs have relegated chemical cameras to niche markets. Digital cameras now include wireless communication capabilities to transfer print or share photos, and are commonly found on mobile phones. Early development, the concept of digitizing images on scanners, and the concept of digitizing video signals, predate the concept of making still pictures by digitizing signals from an array of discrete sensor elements. Early spy satellites used the extremely complex and expensive method of de-orbit and airborne retrieval of film canisters. Technology was pushed to skip these steps through the use of in-satellite developing and electronic scanning of the film for direct transmission to the ground. The amount of film was still a major limitation, and this was overcome and greatly simplified by the push to develop an electronic image capturing array that could be used instead of film. The first electronic imaging satellite was the KH-11 launched by the NRO in late 1976. It had a charge-coupled device array with a resolution of 800x800 pixels. At Phillips Labs in New York, Edward Stopp, Peter Kath and Sold Ziliger filed for a patent on all solid-state radiation images on September 6, 1968 and constructed a flat-screen target for receiving and storing an optical image on a matrix composed of an array of photodiodes connected to a capacitor to form an array of two terminal devices connected in rows and columns. Their U.S. patent was granted on November 10, 1970. Texas Instruments engineer Willis Adcock designed a filmless camera that was not digital and applied for a patent in 1972, but it is not known whether it was ever built. The first recorded attempt at building a digital camera was in 1975 by Stephen Sasson, an engineer at Eastman Kodak. It used the then-new solid-state CCD image sensor chips developed by Fairchild Semiconductor in 1973. The camera weighed 8 pounds, recorded black-and-white images to a compact cassette tape, had a resolution of 0.01 megapixels, and took 23 seconds to capture its first image in December 1975. The prototype camera was a technical exercise, not intended for production. Analog electronic cameras. Handheld electronic cameras, in the sense of a device meant to be carried and used like a handheld film camera, 
appeared in 1981 with the demonstration of the Sony Mavic Air. This is not to be confused with the later cameras by Sony that also bore the Mavic Air name. This was an analog camera, in that it recorded pixel signals continuously, as videotaped machines did, without converting them to discrete levels. It recorded television-like signals to a 2AA, a 2-inch video floppy. In essence it was a video movie camera that recorded single frames, 50 per disc in field mode and 25 per disc in frame mode. The image quality was considered equal to that of then current televisions. Analog electronic cameras do not appear to have reached the market until 1986 with the Canon RC701. Canon demonstrated a prototype of this model at the 1984 Summer Olympics, printing the images in the Yamayuri Shinbun, a Japanese newspaper. In the United States, the first publication to use these cameras for real reportage was USA Today, in its coverage of World Series baseball. Several factors held back the widespread adoption of analog cameras. The cost, poor image quality compared to film, and the lack of quality affordable printers. Capturing and printing an image originally required access to equipment such as a frame grabber, which was beyond the reach of the average consumer. The video floppy disks later had several reader devices available for viewing on a screen, but were never standardized as a computer drive. The early adopters tended to be in the news media, where the cost was negated by the utility and the ability to transmit images by telephone lines. The poor image quality was offset by the low resolution of newspaper graphics. This capability to transmit images without a satellite link was useful during the Tiananmen Square protests of 1989 and the First Gulf War in 1991. U.S. government agencies also took a strong interest in the still video concept, notably the U.S. Navy for use as a real-time air-to-sea surveillance system. The first analog electronic camera marketed to consumers may have been the Canon RC250 Sharpshot in 1988. A notable analog camera produced the same year was the Nikon QV1000C, designed as a press camera and not offered for sale to general users, which sold only a few hundred units. It recorded images in grayscale, and the quality in newspaper print was equal to film cameras. In appearance it closely resembled a modern digital single-lens reflex camera. Images were stored on video floppy disks. Silicon film a proposed digital sensor cartridge for film cameras that would allow 35mm cameras to take digital photographs without modification was announced in late 1998. Silicon film was to work like a roll of 35mm film, with a 1.3 megapixel sensor behind the lens and a battery and storage unit fitting in the film holder in the camera. The product, which was never released became increasingly obsolete due to improvements in digital camera technology and affordability. Silicon Film's parent company filed for bankruptcy in 2001. The Arrival of True Digital Cameras By the late 1980s, the technology required to produce truly commercial digital cameras existed. The first true portable digital camera that recorded images as a computerized file was likely the Fuji DS-1P of 1988, which recorded to a 16 MB internal memory card that used a battery to keep the data in memory. This camera was never marketed in the United States, and has not been confirmed to have shipped even in Japan. The first digital camera of any kind ever sold commercially was possibly the Megavision Tessera in 1987 though there is not extensive documentation of its sale known. The first portable digital camera that was actually marketed commercially was sold in December 1989 in Japan, the DSX by Fuji The first commercially available portable digital camera in the United States was the Dica Modelo 1, first shipped in November 1990. It was originally a commercial failure because it was black and white, low in resolution, and cost nearly $1,000. It later saw modest success when it was resold as the Logitech Photoman in 1992. It used a CCD image sensor, stored pictures digitally, and connected directly to a computer for download. In 1991, Kodak brought to market the Kodak DCS-100, the beginning of a long line of professional Kodak DCS SLR cameras that were based in part on film bodies, often Nikons. It used a 1.3 megapixel sensor, 
had a bulky external digital storage system and was priced at $13,000. The move to digital formats was helped by the formation of the first JPEG and MPEG standards in 1988, which allowed image and video files to be compressed for storage. The first consumer camera with a liquid crystal display on the back was the Casio QV10 developed by a team led by Hiroyuki Sutaka in 1995. The first camera to use compact flash was the Kodak DC25 in 1996 The first camera that offered the ability to record video clips may have been the Ricoh RDC1 in 1995. In 1995 Minolta introduced the RD175 which was based on the Minolta 500 CSLR with a splitter and three independent CCDs. This combination delivered 1.75 M pixels. The benefit of using an SLR base was the ability to use any existing Minolta AF mount lens. 1999 saw the introduction of the Nikon D1, a 2.74 megapixel camera that was the first digital SLR developed entirely from the ground up by a major manufacturer and at a cost of under $6,000 at introduction was affordable by professional photographers and high-end consumers. This camera also used Nikon F-mount lenses, which meant film photographers could use many of the same lenses they already owned. Digital camera sales continued to flourish, driven by technology advances. The digital market segmented into different categories, compact digital still cameras, bridge cameras, mirrorless compacts and digital SLRs. One of the major technology advances was the development of CMOS sensors, which helped drive sensor costs low enough to enable the widespread adoption of camera phones. See also, single lens reflex camera, digital camera, history of photography, photographic lens design, references, notes. External links